Day two of Ignite here in Orlando, and today we talk about Internet of Things in Azure. There were some great announcements, and I've picked my three favorites. Azure Digital Twins, a virtual representation of a physical environment that brings in data from a variety of sources. Azure Sphere, a way to create secured, connected microcontroller devices. And enhancements to the Azure IoT platform, including support for Google Android. And then we also have interviews with some of the lovely people from Microsoft coming up. Coming to you straight from Microsoft Ignite at the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida. Azure Digital Twins is a representation of a physical environment that brings in data from a variety of sources. Historically, digital twins have been used for industrial equipment, you know, machines, fleets of machines, engines, and the like. But the concept of a digital twin is also broadly applicable to modeling all the ways we live and work in our physical environment. Modeling the complex interactions and high value intersections between people, places, and things is unlocking new opportunities, creating new efficiencies, and improving public and private spaces. Azure Digital Twins is a new platform for comprehensive digital models and spatially aware solutions that can be applied to any physical environment. Azure Digital Twins has been developed as part of the Azure IoT platform to provide all of the scale, reliability, compliance, security, and privacy benefits Microsoft Azure is known for. Azure Sphere, a holistic solution to creating secured connected microcontroller devices, is now available in public preview. The solution provides security that starts with secured microcontrollers and extends to a turnkey cloud service that guards every Azure Sphere device. Development kits are now universally available. For Azure Sphere, Microsoft built its own Linux-based kernel, but the focus is on selling services around it, not selling OS licenses. So every year, hardware companies ship 9 billion small connected microcontroller devices, and few of them are easily updated and hence prone to security issues once they are out in the wild. Azure Sphere, a physical device, aims to offer a combination of cloud-based security, a secure OS, and a certified microcontroller to remedy this situation. Azure IoT Hub, Microsoft's cloud offering for managing IoT devices, will now support Android and the Android Things platform via the Java SDK. Azure users can use the Java SDK to turn Android and Android Things devices into IoT devices. All features in Java SDK will be available, including the Azure IoT Hub features and SDK, specific features such as retry policy for network reliability. Also today, the general availability of IoT Hub with Azure Event Grid was announced. After six months in preview, the combination of Event Grid and IoT Hub is now in general availability. The four main parts of IoT Hub and Event Grid are device created, deleted, connected, and disconnected. IoT Hub is the publisher of these events, and any time these events occur, a customer can subscribe to the events and handle them accordingly through other Azure services like Logic Apps, Functions, Event Hubs, or even other third-party services. Now I'm here with Berg Holland from Microsoft. Thanks Hello. for uh, Hey Berg. How's it going? <laughs> so, uh, what do you do at Microsoft? I guess is my first question. Oh, that's a great question. Okay. Uh, anyway, no. <laughs> <laughs> I work on the developer relations team, developer advocacy, uh, on the Azure side. So, okay. And specifically with JavaScript. So our job is really to make sure that the experience in Azure is as good as it can be for JavaScript developers. Yep. And uh, so we basically get to to do things the hard way so that you don't have to. So you, you, I guess your job is to figure out how things work on a Microsoft kind of background level so that you can tell everybody else how it works with everything else. Yeah, that's definitely part of it. And the other yeah. part is just going back to Microsoft and saying that's just not how JavaScript developers would expect this to work at all. We, oh. need, we need to change this. Oh, that's so cool. We're in, we're in the engineering organization for that reason so that we can advocate on behalf of the community and the customer. Oh, gotcha. So that's the other half of advocacy is the other direction. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, on behalf of developers. So you kind of feedback the loop Correct. as well. That's, yep, that's exactly right. Cool. All right, so I know that you have a website that I you do. created with uh -huh. someone else yes. called You Can Do What in VS Code, or VS Code, or You Can Do That in VS Code. What is it? Can you tell me? Well, it's a GeoCity site that we built in front page. Uh, it's, called <laughs> it's called VS Code Can Do That, and it's a site all about tips and tricks for using VS Code. So the idea was to do these short videos that had no sound, so kind of like GIFs, but oh. you know, a little bit higher quality. And they're basically just cool things that you could do with VS Code that you might not know that you could do. Like, did you know that you can write serverless functions with VS Code and deploy them? Did you know that you can debug apps that are in the cloud with VS Code? Did you know that you can tweak your editor so that it looks like this instead of like this kind of thing? Yeah. And uh, 
Brian Clark's on there. You can't see Brian. He's out of frame. He'll be on shortly. He'll be on shortly. He does these two-minute videos every month that contain all of the updates to VS Code. Ah, because yeah. yeah, because they release a lot of features every month, and it's hard to stay up to date. And yeah, so he sure. does these amazing videos where you can get all the new features inside of two minutes. It's pretty cool. So that's on the site, too. I like it. Check the link. Of course. So we are at Microsoft Ignite, obviously. You know, huge, massive building. I've Slightly never seen large. anything yeah. like it. Yeah, it's big. Is there any announcements that you have come across that is particularly cool when they, you know, think of what you do day to day? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think the most exciting one for me was the Microsoft Learn announcement, oh, yeah. um, where they announced the new learning uh, platform for Azure. So we've been working really hard on creating these tutorials that people can go through on the Microsoft Learn site and uh, learn how to do different things, right? Learn how to create a bot, learn how to deploy a serverless function. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff that's up there and some of it's kind of quirky. Like one of them is learn how to overlay emojis onto people's faces using cognitive services, using AI. This is like a, a really fun tutorial. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> it's just a good use of technology. So yes. you're gonna want to do that. <laughs> so I think that was exciting for me just because I know how much work has gone into that. Yeah. And I was so pleased with the way that it was uh, the way that it was built and the way that it was delivered. I just think it looks great. This time I got uh, Brian Clark with me, also from Microsoft. So welcome, Brian. And um, can you just give us a quick overview of what do you do at Microsoft, if anything? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. No. No. <laughs> no, I'm, a, I'm on the developer ad advocacy team uh, for Azure. And uh, basically for that, I'm kind of working on connecting the community with the product teams uh, making sure that our the experience for developers, specifically JavaScript developers, uh, is really well um, and it makes sense. Okay. So when you say JavaScript, is it like any JavaScript? So you do whatever people want with JavaScript, and you find the tooling that what Microsoft can do for that community? Yeah, absolutely. So I particularly focus with Node.js a lot. That's where I kind of am drawn cool. to. But we cover things like Angular, uh, just vanilla JavaScript, React, Vue.js. Um, pretty much anything like web development related is where our focus is. Now I know that you have somewhat of a passion for VS Code as well. Just you know, on the team, I love the product. I love the the editor as well. And I know you have some, should we call them tips or tricks for VS Code? Do you want to share? Sure. Yeah. So every time the VS Code team is phenomenal, and they're producing a new release every month, uh, and so. I, in particular, was like, oh man, there's so much going on in the release notes, it's kind of hard for somebody to kind of digest and take the time to Absolutely, do that. Absolutely, yeah. So I was like, hey, why don't I make these quick videos every time they release to kind of highlight a few of the features there. Ah. Uh, but the downside is that now I definitely have to read the release <laughs> notes, uh, but it's for everyone else's benefit. Yeah, so, and that's so I highlight kind of what the new features are, what are cool, and give you a quick digest of what's going on there. Yeah, and place. where can we find those? Uh, they're on Twitter, all the social media, YouTube, everywhere. So that is it for day two at Microsoft Ignite in Orlando. There is obviously a lot more news coming out of Ignite than what we can tell you about on the show, but today we cover the following. Azure Digital Twins, a virtual representation of a physical environment that brings in data from a variety of sources. Azure Sphere, a way to create secured, connected microcontroller devices. New enhancements to the Azure IoT platform, including support for Google Android, and Event Grid in the Azure IoT Hub. And then we talk to Burke Holland and Brian Clark from Microsoft about their work with helping web developers be awesome and what their favorite announcements are at Ignite. So stay tuned for more Azure coverage from Microsoft Ignite in Orlando on Azure This Week, today. Keep that tech intensity up and keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus. Mm -hmm.